what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at PlayStation Plus on PC and for this one we're going to be using some low powered units and in turn this is going to allow us to play PlayStation 1, 2, 3 and even PlayStation 4 games on this cheaper lower powered laptop and this low powered mini PC that you can pick up on Amazon for around $150. Now this will also work on older office PCs like the Optiplexes, the HPs, and those are usually a dime a dozen. You can pick them up for around $60 on eBay and sometimes even Amazon you'll find them. But this works in Windows and if you're not familiar with PlayStation Plus for PC, Basically, it's Sony's answer to Microsoft's Game Pass. We'll be able to stream some PlayStation, PSP, PlayStation 2, PS3, and PS4 games to these PCs running Windows. And you don't need much power at all, but you will need a decent internet connection, and I highly recommend using Ethernet. Having a wired connection will give you the best experience, but when we test it out on this laptop in the video, we will be using Wi-Fi so you can see how it performs there. But with the little mini PC here, we're going to be using Ethernet because it actually works out really, really well on this unit. Both of these computers have low-end Intel Celeron CPUs, and the laptop was a Walmart special, I think about two years ago. I only paid $150 for it. It's running Windows 10. And the Aerofera Mini PC is running Windows 11. So as the name implies, you will need a PlayStation Plus account. Luckily, my wife is a PlayStation girl. She's got her account. I've got my Microsoft account. I've just signed in with her stuff. I've been using it for the last couple days and had a really good time with it. All right, so here we go. So I've got Windows 11 installed on this Aerofera Mini PC. Remember, this is a very low-end PC. We've got 8 gigs of RAM, and real quick, let me go ahead and open up the task manager here. As you can see, we've got that Celeron N5105 with just 4 cores. We've got 8 gigs of RAM and those built-in UHD graphics. So nothing special here. All of the heavy lifting is going to be done on Sony servers. Basically, we're just streaming these games over here. And your best friend when it comes to streaming or cloud gaming is going to be Ethernet. Now, even on a really fast router with Wi-Fi 6, I've run into some hiccups, so I always like to go wired when I can. And with this mini PC or an older PC, if you want to set one up like that, since it's stationary, your best bet is to go with Ethernet. But it will work over Wi-Fi, and we will take a look at that on the laptop in just a second. But here's the PlayStation Plus interface, and it's actually really nice. Unfortunately, I can't get the controllers to work in it, so I do have to use my keyboard and mouse to kind of navigate this. But there's a ton of stuff to choose from. We've got our categories. We've got best in class up top. We can go on down here and find the PS3 classics. We've also got some original PlayStation, PSP, and PS2 games here that we can choose from. Or we can go all the way down to the bottom and check it out in alphabetical order. But yeah, there's a ton of great games to play right now, and since they kind of want to compete with Microsoft's Game Pass, I think they'll be adding a lot more, more features with the app itself. First thing I'd like to see them change is navigation with a controller, be it, you know, a Bluetooth controller, a wired controller, it could be a PS4, PS3, or even an Xbox controller. And really, the only graphic settings we have here is for the app itself. We can turn on hardware rendering, and you definitely want to do that. I'm just using the built-in UHD graphics here to get better performance out of the app itself. But it will work over software if that's something you need to do. But yeah, getting into a game is super easy. We'll go ahead and start this up. And there's a little bit you need to know about controller compatibility with this. It's a little odd, but with the PS3 and PS4 controller, we can't go wireless unless we use their official USB adapter, at least at the time of making this. I think they will be changing this soon, and I really hope they do. You can go wired with the PS4 or PS3 controller, or you could just use a third-party controller or an Xbox controller, which a lot of people have laying around. And with an Xbox controller, we can go wireless with it without any kind of adapter. We're just going to connect to Bluetooth on the PC itself. It's going to tell me that I'm not using a DualShock 3 or DualShock 4 controller. So in order to exit a game, I do have to hit escape on my keyboard. And that's totally fine with me. Motion controls aren't going to work because the Microsoft Xbox controller doesn't have them built in. Button labels will be different because we're using an Xbox controller to play PlayStation games. And obviously with this controller, there's no touchpad built in. But this is exactly what I've been using to play my games. An Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth works out really well. So I've loaded up Spider-Man Miles Morales here, and it's going to take a second, but it gives me this PlayStation logo. And up in the top left-hand corner, I do have Afterburner running. Now this isn't going to give me specs on the game itself. It's really just kind of monitoring the CPU and the app. 
The app is running at 60 FPS, and when streaming this on this low-end CPU, I don't max it out at all. I was actually expecting to see, you know, a 90% usage on that CPU or GPU. It's actually relatively low, and this PC here only pulls around 15 watts maximum. While I'm streaming, it's only pulling 8 watts in all. So it's a very low power consumption setup that I have here. Now I'm going to jump right into a little bit of gameplay. And I gotta say, this looks really good and plays perfectly fine. Now remember, I am connected over Ethernet, and where I am right now, I do have a pretty decent internet connection, and it's really gonna depend on your connection. But all of the games that I've tested so far are perfectly playable, and I can just sit back and enjoy streaming these games right to this mini PC. And every time I play this game, like a lot of other people out there, I just kind of get lost in the web swinging. I mean, it looks so awesome, and the Miles Morales version has a lot better animations in my opinion. It just looks so cool. So I'm just going to play through for a little bit here, and then we'll move over to another game. So you could actually have another app on the side here and stream a game at the same time. But we're going to go ahead and exit. And we can just close this window down. It'll bring us right back to the menu. And we can start up another game. Let's go with, uh, let's go with a fighting game. We'll do MK11. So when it comes to the raw power of this mini PC that I'm using, we'd never be able to play this game over 10 FPS at the lowest resolution we could go on this game. But streaming it here from uh, PlayStation Now works out really well. Alright, so moving over to the super cheap laptop. This was a Walmart special a couple years ago. I think I only paid like $150 for it. It's got a Celeron N5030, only 4 gigabytes of RAM, and built-in UHD graphics. So again, nothing special, and the mini PC we were just using actually outperforms this laptop. With this one, we are going to be connected over Wi-Fi, and this does have Wi-Fi 5 built-in. I'm connected to my 5 gigahertz network at the house. And we do have Bluetooth built in, so I could connect one of those Bluetooth controllers, but I'm just going to go with a wired PS4 controller. And we'll test out the remastered version of Shadow of the Colossus, or the PS4 version, which does look absolutely amazing, even while streaming it. So far, over Wi-Fi, performance has been pretty decent. On the initial load-in, I did notice a few graphical glitches, you know, kind of streaming in from that Wi-Fi 5. But it did clear up, and this is something I wouldn't mind playing through on. So yeah, this is actually pretty cool, and I've been messing around with it for the last few days. I personally really enjoy using it, and since my wife already has PlayStation Plus, I figured I could go ahead and sign in and test it out. And what you're seeing on screen right now is direct HDMI capture from the mini PC with Spider-Man Miles Morales streaming to the mini PC using PlayStation Plus. Not bad at all. It's not going to have the fidelity as if this was running on a PS4 or a PS5, but it still looks really good on a 1080p display. And if you've got a lower end laptop or a lower end PC that just can't run games at full speed, this actually might be a good option. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. This has definitely come a long way and I'm sure it's going to get better because they definitely want to compete with Microsoft Game Pass. So I will be keeping an eye on it. If you're interested in checking this out, I will leave a couple links in the description. You can download the application from the official PlayStation website. You're going to just install it like any other EXE in Windows. Sign in with your PlayStation Plus account and you can start streaming from there. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always... Thanks for watching.